So the first objective for part two is to appreciate the unique metabolic demands of skeletal muscle and uh, how those demands change with different types of skeletal muscle. We will look at the muscle cell metabolism. In other words, how do muscles get their ATP? And then we're also going to compare that to the type of muscle fiber, right? The types of muscle fibers depend on their main mechanism for generating ATP. So we'll look at those two topics. We want to remind ourselves here that ATP is required for muscles to generate force. And the specific way that that happens is by uh, driving crossbridge cycling. Okay, so if you remind yourself of the myosin head that requires the ATP to drive that power stroke, um, that is the exact uh, spot that ATP is required for muscle contraction. Now, there's going to be different types of mechanisms that muscles can use to make ATP, and that is where their type will differ. So we'll look at that, but there's also um, mechanisms that are used sort of in um, in transition or temporarily uh, while the other mechanisms are more sustainable. So we will talk about how that ATP is generated. So here are the three mechanisms of ATP generation for muscle cells. Okay, and we have looked at some of these processes before when we talked about cellular respiration. So the three sources of ATP is phosphorylation of ADP by creatine phosphate. And this first mechanism is what we describe as being that transient or temporary mechanism. It's not sustainable. It's not going to generate ATP for a long period of time. And it's not going to generate a lot of ATP. But it can be used in transition while the other two mechanisms that are much more sustainable um, and much more effective uh, get warmed up, right? They just take a little bit more time. So the other two are oxidative phosphorylation in the mitochondria. And this should sound familiar. This is the electron transport chain. Um, basically, when we have the electron shuttle into the inner mitochondrial membrane, and we make the most amount of ATP that way. We can also make a smaller amount of ATP through anaerobic glycolysis, right? And again, we've talked about this in cellular respiration. So here we can take glucose from the blood. We can break it down into its smaller units via the processes of glycolysis, which are the enzymatic reactions. And that will yield us a small amount of ATP. And then we can shuttle those byproducts off to generate electrons. And that will drive oxidative phosphorylation. So glycolysis can make a small amount of ATP. Oxidative phosphorylation makes the bulk of ATP for muscle contraction. Let's start off by looking at that first temporary or transient uh, mechanism, which is the creatine-creatine phosphate system. And this is where we make uh, a small amount of ATP that is stored in the muscle and that can be quickly used when the muscle is at rest. So when the muscle contractions start, you want to have a source of ATP that's ready to go, right? This needs to be responsive and spontaneous to keep up with the, um, the, the speed of muscle contractions, right? When you go to make a movement, right, in your body, you don't want to wait for ATP to be made at that time. You want to have it ready to go to power the contraction um, at, at the time. So that is where this system comes in. So we have creatine phosphate which has a phosphate on it. And that along with ADP will drive the reaction to create creatine and then take that phosphate and add it to ADP and make ATP. Now the enzyme that drives this is called creatine kinase. So creatine kinase is in your muscle and it is helping you to have that small amount of ATP on tap, ready to go, whenever you need to power a quick muscle contraction. Now the law of mass action will take into effect here. So you use ATP and that will drive the reaction to the right, right? If you have a lot of ATP being utilized, you're gonna drive the reaction to make more of that. And as you have more ATP 
um, on hand and less of it being used, you're gonna drive the reaction to the left, okay? So wherever we have the most need, we can drive this reaction, right? The bidirectional arrows here tell us that depending on our substrates, we can drive the reaction <clears throat> to the left or to the right. Now, the amount of ATP that's made here can supply up to five times the amount of ATP that's needed um, at rest. So it's not a lot, but it's enough um, compared to what the ATP production is at rest. And on tap here simply means, on tap here simply means that uh, when your muscle is at rest, it's going to make that ATP and have it stored and ready to go to power contractions, um, which is basically starting out the contractions.